what's happening? Ice cold coke in your ears on your screen. And today we playing NBA 2K16 My Career Mode. So we picking it up here on the first playoff game. I know I don't be updating this as much as I should, but you know what? There's just so many games to play and I'm doing my best. <laughs> so anyway, let's just go ahead, get right on to the first playoff game. Should be good. Hey, let's bring the energy. Right game one. Let's set the tempo. No, let's set our tempo. All right, play hard, bring the energy, and let's go. Future leader, baby. It's gonna be my team next year. All right, facing off against Isaiah Thomas, future young star. All right, Wade, give it up. Come on, Wade. He's too small to guard me, though. He's too small. Damn, I just realized we went to 20 to six already. Without me. <laughs> Money, give me that. Oh, too early. Oh, got them cookies. Got them. Whew. Good start, baby, good start. Damn. Oh, just collecting them cookies. Get him, buzzer beater, baby. Give me that. I'll take that and I will finish that. Got to get the points while I can. All right, we take game one and we heading on to game two. Keeping that home court advantage. I know money isn't everything to you, Freak. And I find it hard to say this, but I've grown to respect that in you. Won't expect in the cutscene. But it's my responsibility to point out the consequences of that way of thinking. Now for you, winning is everything, but winning isn't something you could do alone. It requires excellent or at the very least competent coaching, contributing teammates, and God willing good health. And we all know that's not a guarantee. Now the reality is you're not in control of any of those other factors, but if you as the star player fail to win and deliver a championship, you will be held responsible. You will be scapegoated, you will be villainized, and you will be punished accordingly. So when you say to me that as a free agent, all you care about is being in the best position to win, I understand what you mean. But again, that's not only up to you. Now, I'm gonna call my guy at Apollo Jets. I'm gonna get us a private plane for this tour. I promise you, you're gonna love the free agency experience. Now, your relationship with Vic has unfortunately cost us in some of these negotiations. We had 10 teams interested, we now only have three. But thankfully, thankfully, you wised up when it came to Vic. Have you been in contact with Vic? Yo, freak, look at me. He still has one of my cars, Dom. What did I tell you about the L word? The L word? What is that? Loyalty. Uh. I don't know what kind of hold this Vic has over you, but it makes me scared. A major You're one. You're a free agent for the first time in your career, and the only person you need to be loyal to is you. You need to be an FOF. You need to be a friend of freak. Let's forget about winning without appropriate compensation and loyalty that hasn't been earned and isn't deserved. This is a tough business, freak. We need to be tougher. Come on. CC? Woo, Lord Jesus, I was about to blow a gasket. <sighs> okay, Freak. Now, I've, there are very few options on the table, and I want you to explore them all before making your final decision. Whatever you decide, it needs to be an informed decision, not an emotional one. The larger the markets, the greater resources at your disposal and exposure for you. But if you don't allocate these resources properly, then it's just a big spotlight on you as you lose. Well, thank you kindly, big sis. She's right, Freak. Thanks, Don. Absolutely. Team Freak. That's what we're about. Oh, whoa, I don't know if I like this. What? Dom and CC high-fiving like that? I mean, yeah, why you got so certain I'm gonna lose? Whoa, whoa, whoa. No one thinks you're going to lose, Freak. You guys sure sound like it. 
We just want you to select a franchise that has great coaching, super talent exposure, but most importantly, a ton of cap space. If the team doesn't win and you're to blame, at least you won't be broke, capiche? Capiche. Also, you should make sure it's somewhere you want to raise a family, but no pressure. Mm. <laughs> you guys have made this decision so much easier. What did mom and dad say? You know what they said. I mean, but honestly, I'm torn. I've heard and listened to what you've all had to say. Don't take this the wrong way. There's just one person I haven't heard from, and that's Vic. Oh, Lord, help Who us. Who gives a fuck? Yo, Vic, where you at? I've been trying to call you, man. Hit me back. Do you know him? He's probably somewhere too loud to hear his phone. I don't know. I think Vic's actually upset with me. What's this? Wait. Wait, what? What, what, wait, 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 what? I am now a free agent? What the fuck just happened? I don't understand what I'm looking at right now. I only played one playoff game. Where's the game two? Where's the second round? Where's the conference finals? Where's the finals? Did we lose the next four games? I'm really gonna jump from one playoff game to free agency? Oh my God. <laughs> Are you serious? Y'all really gonna do that? I was actually looking forward to playing the playoffs and maybe winning the championship. Wow. You are now a free agent. Choose three teams you are interested in. Negotiate if you think you can get a better deal, but be careful how hard you push. <sighs> All right, so I decided to go ahead and put Clippers and Warriors on the list and have Minnesota number one. It'll it give me my best chance to be playing for the Timberwolves so I can play with Wiggins and Towns. Let's see how I go. I hope I'm not making a mistake here. All right. All right. Hello. Okay, well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming here today. I'd especially like to thank God, my Lord and Savior, my family, my agent, Mr. Don Pagnotti, Twin sister and manager, CC. My lady, thank you guys for all your support. I'd also like to thank all the fans um, and all the people out there who consider themselves an FOF, a friend of free. My free agency has been nothing short of amazing. And frankly, it has been a dream come true. But like most dreams, the reality is very different from what I imagined. Though I wouldn't change a thing about this period and the time I spent in the NBA, I can honestly say that Nothing has been more gratifying and more difficult than choosing where to play next year. I sought the wise counsel of my loved ones. Nothing puts me at ease more than knowing that regardless of my decision, you guys will be there for me no matter what. Now, there are so many wonderful teams in the league, each filled with stellar talent and all vying to be number one. For me, there's nothing more important than winning and surrounding myself with those who feel just as passionately about the game as I do and have an unrelenting desire to win a championship ring, that's what matters most to me. It's for this reason, above all, I have decided to play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah! Play at City, baby! Well, that ended mighty abruptly. The talent they have on that team, they go win the championship this year. You think so? <laughs> and you know what that means. I'm going to get Cha-ching! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I know. Hey, hey, hey! Where Vic at? That's my man. All right. All right, son. Congratulations. Damn, his mom got an ass. <laughs> You already know who that is. Oh, Yo, fool, where you been? I've been trying to call you. Mr. Freak. Yo, who's this? This is Officer Vasquez with the 9th Precinct. Officer Vasquez? 
What did Vic do now? Mr. Freak, there's been an accident. Look, we're gonna need you to come down to the following address as soon as possible. What kind of accident? Put Vic on the phone. I can't do that, sir. No, 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 you, you're not hearing me. I want to talk to Vic. Look, sir, we need you to come down as soon as you can. No, 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 hey, hey, hey listen, listen, on? listen, listen, listen. Put down the phone, and I don't want to hear it get picked up until Victor Van Leer is on the phone. Give me the phone. Put Vic on the phone. Mr. Freak, Mr. Van Leer was killed in a car accident. What's going on? Give me the phone. The car he no. was driving was registered to you. We were able no. to identify him from the Listen to me. Session. God Freak, I don't damn. want to talk to you no more. Freak, give me the phone. <gasps> damn. This is CC. This is Freak's manager. Who am I speaking with? Hey, yes, look, we're going to need somebody to come down and identify Mr. Van Leer. Eyewitnesses say that he was involved in a car chase. Two cars were chasing him, and as the chase escalated, he eventually lost control and crashed. Look, I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss. Dumbass nigga, yo. Dumbass Hello. nigga. Outside of the deceased, was anybody else injured? Out of it. I think he got some thick ass tears. Vic died in a car accident. What? <laughs> yeah, they said he was in a car chase. Please, no. Freak, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoop, ain't got to worry about him no more. Ain't got to worry about him exposing you. That sounds so fucked up. <laughs> God damn. I'm going to hell for that. So, I guess that's the end of the story. That's all I started here. Right here in the dome. Yeah, I was all about living the dream. Yeah. I know it'd be some nightmares. As daddy always says, all that glitters ain't gold. Yeah, I'm gonna miss my brother Vic, though. Deep down, he was a good person at heart, but he was never quite right. Something was always off with him, yeah. even when we were little growing up. Yeah, I know, I know, but I loved him anyway. I knew he was trying to take advantage of our friendship, but I didn't care. We were boys, ride or die, you know that? Ride or die. Just hope Vic finally found peace and death that he never found in life. Well, may he rest in power. <laughs> when you really sit down and think about it, life is but the length of a blink of an eye. And that's for so sure quick. We spend a third sleeping in bed, a third trying to figure this thing called life out. <laughs> Yo, by the time we think you got it all figured out, you only got a third of your life left. Yeah, life's a trip. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> life's a trip. <sighs> ten times ten. Well, honey. <laughs> Hey, yo, shout out to my man, Vic. <laughs> shout out to Vic. <laughs> Come on, let's bounce. All right. Yeah, I'm about to wake up the project like I used you to. Better remember? not. <laughs> you better not. We ain't kids no more. CC? CC. Hey! Why are you sneaking up on us? Hey, man. We thought you two left town. Your Damn, family. man, you still got your parents living in the hood, man. Get your parents up out of there. I wish we had known you were coming. We would have made you that tacky ass furniture. What y'all doing? Yeah, chatting. Yeah, talking about yesterday's service. Oh, okay. How you holding up, son? You know what? I'm okay, pops. But you know what? We love you too so much. And it's only now that I'm realizing how much you two sacrificed for Cece and myself. Hey, you, you know Vic didn't really get to know his father growing up. Like, we were lucky to grow up in a household with two loving parents. So, and you know what's sad to say? Like, people thought we had a highly unusual home in a project. Yeah, folks always talk about the negative effects of boys with no father in a home, but it affects girls too. And it's helped me in my relationships with men in my life. What men? Anywho, I know that all men are not dogs because I had a great father in the home. You, Daddy. I was there, too. He didn't do it alone now. <laughs> yes, right. Mama, of course. It <laughs> goes without oh, saying. Shit. Thank you, daughter. I did what my father did, and his father, and his father before that. A man, a real man, will always be involved in his children's lives. I love your mother. We had our ups and downs. But I love her more than life itself. You two are a direct result of that true love. Yeah, we know that. Switching subjects. Yeah. I know the both of you like I know the back of my hand. You said you were leaving after the service. Why are you here out of the blue? Yeah, what's up? Why I gotta be all that? Yeah, we can't stop by and show our love and appreciation for right. our loving parents. I'm highly offended. I am appalled. Uh, what's happening? Yeah, come clean. <sighs> okay, okay. 
Me and CC just want to give you a little present. Yeah, a small token. A yeah, move them out the hood. Yeah, all the sacrifices you've made. And we want nothing in return but your love. Mm -hmm. And grandchildren. Uh, but get married first. <laughs> yeah, save your money. But daddy, we really just want to. But daddy, nothing. You heard your father. Well, maybe, maybe one, one day. day. <laughs> maybe. But one day is not today. Nope. <laughs> OK. Well, for real, for real, we do have an actual flight to catch tonight. For real this time? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. for real this time. <laughs> well, it's so, good to see you again. Uh, love you, yes, love you hey, too. I'll call us when you get there, OK? Well, we will. As soon as you yeah, land. Yeah, you. OK, mama. All right. Yeah, you all okay, call mama. us as soon as you get back. All right, as soon as you land. All right, yes, promise, promise. Take care of your brother. Of course, always. I got this. Don't trust. <laughs> Hey, did you forget something? Uh, no. Can you do me a favor and head to the sofa? The sofa? Well, what's at the sofa? Just look behind the cushion. Behind the cushion? Uh, Pete, come here. What they want now? What's in the envelope? Just look inside, Mama. Pete, you open it. Hey, frequency, what's this? Does it look like it opens the doors? Keys to a house? Uh-huh. A new home? Uh-huh. Son, now I didn't told you and your sister a million times. Me and your mother mm -hmm. are very comfortable yes, right where we are. Yes, absolutely right. This yeah. is Harlem, USA. Project or no project, this is our apartment. This is the home we made for you to raise you up right in. We're not moving like everybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Let me talk Tell to him. Tell him something. Frequency, we both appreciate it very much. I mean, we, we're very uh, grateful. Uh, okay, can, look, there's something else in the envelope. He, he says look inside the envelope. What? Well, look inside. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Montego Bay, Jamaica. <gasps> Baby, pack your bags. We are living the dream. <laughs> oh. Thank y'all. Love you. All right. Love you guys. Love you. Be a freak. <laughs> By the time you read this letter, I'll be long gone. What the fuck? <laughs> wrote this letter. Get the fuck no out of here. I think my voice will ever be heard. This piece of yellow paper. He wearing white. Only way I'll ever get Shouldn't his motherfucking ass be wearing black and red? And really get to know me, Victor Van Leer. My childhood was turbulent. But even in the most unsettling times, there was a break in the tide. My father was the rocky water. And my mom's was the gentle surf. Pops did a lot of foolish stuff. But when he wasn't trashed and was actually taking the time to be a father, he'd say, Vic, you got one life, a fragile life. God can take this life whenever he sees fit. So live and live plentiful. Each day God gives, live it in abundance. My pops was a smart dude, the most dangerous kind, educated and street smart. And this apple didn't fall too far from the tree. My mom's, yo, she was an angel. No matter how heavy the hand, she would do anything for me. And by chance, when I was casted into that darkness, she was the voice I followed back to the light. I was so young, too young. But my decaying flesh carries the scars and memories that won't fade. She's the reason I'm as loving as I was. She taught me to look at others as human beings and not objects. Now, whether it's pain, a simple kiss, hug, or I love you, could disperse that rainy day. That's why I'll, that's why I'll never understand why. Why? Why she of all people was taken from me. The only one good thing I ever had in my life. And that was my mother. You ever feel lonely? Well, I didn't have any siblings. And no one would claim me as their own. It is the first time in my life I even I question the point of living at all. If it wasn't for your family taking me in, I swear I was going to open my wrist or jump in front of the A train.
but I found love. And I found it through my new family. And you abused it. Mr. P, man, he was the complete opposite of who my dad was. He was foreign to me. He was a good, honorable man, and to be honest, he intimidated me. I didn't believe I could ever be the man he tried teaching me to be. Miss Martha, damn. <laughs> Real talk, I was in love with that woman. Freak, if you're reading this right now, I'm sorry. I never met one hottie that came close to her. Mr. Peter's a lucky dude. But unlike my dad, he could recognize the angel in his presence. Aside from my own mom, she's the only other person I truly think understood me. I just wanted to be loved, yo. I just wanted to belong. CC, man, I've seen her make the hardest dudes break at the wrist. I've seen her turn coal into diamonds and then back into coal again, just by doing this intense stare she do. CC is no joke. I love her, though. We used to be close. And again, I'm sorry, freak, but when your sister get all mad and on one, damn, I just... Whew. CC, I love you more than you will ever know. I hope in my time past you can finally forgive me. Yvette is beautiful. A woman about success, work ethic, and never settling for less. Which, that's why I didn't stand a chance. Freak was king, and me, a big, fat zero. She was cool, though. Chill. And when she wasn't being all uptight, that girl was mad funny. I could see why you fell in love with her. She could make any man better. She was exactly what I wanted, and definitely what you needed. Frequency vibrations. My boy, my blood. I'm sorry I couldn't be as great as you. I'm sorry I was your weight and not your pedestal. I wanted to be a lot of things. I thought I was the next prodigy. Then you hit that court, and I knew. It was it. It was you, freak. It was you. I didn't have much of a life, at least not one I could be proud of. I never said this to you, but I wanted to be you. All I wanted was a taste, just a little taste of everything I never had. Can you blame me? Like my dad said, Life is short, and I just wanted to live it abundantly. I know it hurts, but your life would be better without me. There's nothing holding you down anymore, freak. I believe in you. And I always look out for you from above, B. Hey, bring that Jesus piece back for your boy, though, you know. That shuttle's working. Ain't no way he wrote all that on I'll one page. Free. At least I did something right. At the end, I felt as though I had no place here anymore. I never felt as though I belonged. Maybe, maybe my greatness is in the heaven. Say what? <laughs> well, maybe. It's in hell. Just maybe. My greatness is you, freak. I just hope you and the fam remember me as I remember my mom. Look at people like human beings, not objects. Because if you wait, it's often too late. So just say you love them now, man. Be the voice they can follow out of darkness. Be to them what my mother was to me. An angel. Your boy. 
trust and empower. Vic. It's going to show him fade away. Nope. Yep. <laughs> I knew it. All right, y'all. So it seems like that's the conclusion of the Living the Dream series. Part eight, over and done. So from here on out, I guess I'll just do some random season games every now and then. I guess that's the end of the cutscene. So now it's just playing through the season, signing deals, scoring points, blase, blase, like, Subscribe if you enjoyed the video because I definitely enjoyed making it. Ice cold coat. See you when I see you. Peace.